Okay, thank you. Thanks, Karen. Okay, the first thing I'd like to ask is how many people know of the Assistance League in San Mateo? You guys don't count. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we, when Rob asked me, you know, the title for my talk, I said, we're the best kept secret in San Mateo. A disclaimer, until I joined seven years ago, I didn't know we were there either. Um, the Assistance League is a national organization. We got our charter in 1953. Uh, we're at our second location for our thrift shop, which is at 60 North Beach Street. We're all volunteer, um, except for the janitor and the CPA. Um, we do all the rest of the work. The money we get from that we make through the thrift shop all goes back out into the community within San Mateo County. Um, and I think the slideshow will give you some more information and I'm happy to take questions. You want the video now? We're going to do, yes, we're having some technical difficulties. Mike's going to do the video from National first to give you an idea of what we're all about. Each and every community is unique, possessing its own personality, character, and pride. There's a picture of our chapter house at 528 North San Mateo Drive. That's where we have our meetings. Uh, upstairs in the back, we have part of Operation School Bell. It's, it's like a little store. There are racks of clothes for the kids who do not wear uniforms in school. Many of the public schools in San Mateo now wear uniforms. We have some of those. The uniform schools, uh, we deliver directly to the schools. The teachers and the parents help get the sizes we have them delivered right there, but there are schools that are not uniform, and so the kids can come pick out clothes, and they're brand new clothes. So we sell used clothes to buy new clothes for the kids. <laughs> um, that's our chapter house. Uh, 
just as an aside, it used to be the dance studio for Lee Williams, who was one of the Tuskegee Airmen 50-some years ago. Um, we had some very astute members in the 60s. They bought the building. So that's ours. The parking's lousy, but the building's ours. Um, this kind of speaks for itself. Um, we try to identify needs in the community. Uh, sometimes they change every year. Uh, we have some programs that go on year to year that we reevaluate. Um, some of our programs, Operation School Bell, which is where we dress kids um, in new clothes. This year so far we've dressed 1,900 kids in new school clothes. Um, that number varies from year to year as well as the school participation. We have baskets for baby over there on the left. Uh, some of our volunteers knit. Uh, stuff, I don't knit, so sweaters, blankets and stuff, plus some new baby clothes for um, needy mothers, high school moms at Redwood High School, um, new moms at Life Moves, so they have something new for their babies. Um, Operation School Bell, uh, we've expanded to do some literacy programs as well, that's kind of in the, in the works. The thrift shop, there we go, it looks too much like St. Vincent de Paul, which is right to the right. Um, that's been there for quite a while. I didn't know it was there, and I've lived here for 40 years. So we're trying to get out um, the news that we're there. We do have men's clothes, but ladies, we get some really nice stuff sometimes. Eileen Fisher, um, Trina Turk, names that you would recognize, and then there's some stuff that's more appealing to the younger set, but we get some really nice things in there. Um, We've been operating there for 40 years. Apparently, they had a thrift shop further down B Street years ago, but been there for 40 years, and how many of you knew it was there? Yeah. So we take donations of gently used clothes, jewelry, knickknacks. We don't take electronics. So anytime you want to come donate stuff or shop, we're there Tuesdays through Saturdays, 10 to 4. Okay, there's Operation School Bell on the right. Down there you can see our little shop that's upstairs behind our chapter house. Each child receives two complete outfits. This year they were giving them four shirts. They get underwear and a sweatshirt. Um, the hoodies, I believe. You guys donated money for 24 hoodies, was that it? There's the baskets for babies that I explained. Uh, we also provide uh, for new mothers at Cora. Uh, Cora is I can never remember what the acronym stands for. Basically, it's abused women and, and men. It's community overcoming relationship abuse. We do a workshop there. Okay, thank you, Rob. I can never remember what that is. We also started a program a couple of years ago, um, but when I was the manager of the thrift shop, where someone from Cora can come in with a letter from Cora, um, and they're allowed to pick out eight items of clothing, because lots of times those women, and we've had a couple men, who show up with nothing but the clothes on their back. So we do provide them with some clothes when they need it. Assault survivor kits. Um, again, this is a national program. And with the Keller Center at San Mateo Medical Center, we provide um, basic sweatshirts, sweatpants, underwear, slippers, and so forth, and a hygiene kit for the mostly women, again, um, who are there after an assault because they take their clothes away. College scholarships, we give six $3,000 scholarships every year, two to each of the community colleges, Scott, uh, Skyline, Kenyatta, and CSM. Uh, they mostly go to women who are re-entering the workforce and need to get, get an associate's degree. Uh, we help the adult shelters, um, Maple Street, Redwood City, um, some transitional housing that Life Moves, you're probably familiar with Life Moves. Every year we donate, I don't know if it's eight or 10, complete um, bedding, new bedding, towels, uh, kitchenware, um, pots and pans for the transitional housing that life moves. Some of our other community outreach, hospita hospitality house in San Bruno with canned goods. One of our members packed up her SUV and took a bunch of stuff. Cora, um, San Mateo County Hospital, um, often ask for holiday decorations, art supplies, and things for their patients. Uh, this, this 
this 2018-19, we uh, provided over 2,000 school kids with new clothing, shoes, and personal hygiene kits, <coughs> baskets for babies, 26 <coughs> baskets. Um, a few years ago, we got a call. I got a call, because that was, I was doing philanthropic then. One of the mo new moms at Redwood High School, which is the continuation high school in Redwood City. Uh, not Redwood, is it in Redwood City? San Carlos? It's down there somewhere. Yeah. Um, needed a crib. She had a newborn. She was sleeping on the floor with the baby, and there were dogs in the family. So I went to then Toys R Us, bought two cribs, and we delivered them, quarter cribs, and we delivered them to, to the school to be lent out for the moms. Um, last year, we provided 52 assault survivor kits. Um, it's sad that we have to do that, but it's there. The need is there. And the rest of the recipients, uh, about 49,000 went out. Uh, there's the scholarships, the legacy of learning. We donated 2,000 books, which were distributed to youngsters. They also gave new teachers um, a bag full of books. Um, at the end of the fiscal year last year, we had 15, over 15,000, almost 16,000 hours of service from our members. Um, we raised funds primarily through the thrift shop through donations like you guys, and um, we have individuals who donate as well. I don't know if you can see this, so basically our income was about 232000 and our outgo was 185, $185. The difference is that we, um, we have to keep a year's, according to the national rules, we have to keep a year's worth of um, Budget, budgetary money in case something happens we have to still fund our programs for that next year so we have a reserve plus the um, a savings account for the buildings that always need maintenance and if anyone that's about it if anybody has any questions I'd be happy to answer them Yes. I saw Home and Hope up there. What is your involvement with Home and Hope? Um, I believe that we donate some of the needs. Um, we don't donate money to them. I think we donate um, goods. I'm not involved with that, and I don't know if it's blankets or food, but things like that that they might need. Yes? As, as you mentioned, uh, I've never heard of urgent organization. Are you doing anything to get the word out? That the you guys are the first. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that has been a problem. It really has. Um, I took over as PR this year. We've had this slideshow for two years, and we haven't gotten it out there. So, you guys are my guinea pigs. Um, but, yeah, but if any of you know of any other organization that would like to hear about us, we would love to get our name out there. We're not asking for donations, but we don't turn them down. Um, we just want to get our name out there so people know what we do because we do a lot of great stuff and nobody knows about us. So you're right, that's, that's been a downfall, but we're starting today that's changing. <laughs> yeah. So nice to see you again. Yeah. Uh, I was impressed in many ways by your organization when we visited there. One of the things, you, you seem to have some uh, black belts in shopping members. Oh, yes. <laughs> Could you, can you describe how you acquire a lot of clothing that we distributed to the children? Okay. Um, we do have a black belt in shopping. We have one of the women who um, was in charge of Operation School Bell for a couple of years, and she stayed, has stayed very involved in it, and she has black belt in shopping. She looks for bargains because, you know, we're trying to get us, we're trying to do as much as we can with the money that we have. So yeah, she does, she does a lot of online shopping. Um, they used to go to, um, I think it was Old Navy in San Bruno who gave them gave us a good price on things. Um, so yeah, she, she's a black belt shopper. Yeah, she doesn't shop for herself, ever. But, yeah. but you get discounts and, and get organizations to contribute. Uh, you know, we haven't had any organizations contribute clothing, I don't believe. Uh, <clears throat> Except when, you know, you guys you get, gave us the three. You get, you get good bargains. She gets good bargains, yeah. She's a bargain hunter, and she does uh, a really good job. We also, the assistants league also have vendors they can turn to, for especially for the uniforms. There are um, vendors that supply uniforms 
more inexpensively because we're buying in bulk. And they do it for a lot of these systems things. Because more and more public schools are using uniforms now. Okay. So just, a, just a thought, Sears and Tantrand is going out of business. Mm -hmm. And um, has anybody approached them that when they do finally close the doors, the stuff that hasn't been sold, are they going to donate it? Yeah, you it know. It seems to me it would cost more to ship it to a, another store than they would to, to donate it. The one, it, it's worth looking into. The one time we got offered some stuff was at a, a store at Hillsdale Mall, and I was going to dash over there and get the stuff and they decided to donate it somewhere else. So it's certainly worth looking into, and the thought has occurred to me of some of the retail shops that are going out. Um, we often get, uh, sometime in the last few months, somebody must have been closing a small boutique. We got some really nice new stuff. Tags still on, $100, uh, $100 workout pants, still with the tags on. So ladies, you're missing out if you don't come in. <laughs> So yeah, it's worth looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of yes. Any any other questions? Yes. So um, you mentioned chapter. You have a chapter in San Mateo. How many members do you have in the chapter, and what's the demographic? Okay. Um, we have, I believe, like 107 to 110 members. Of those, 70 are active. We have some sustainers, ladies who were. Um, members years ago who want to continue to be members, but after us, I think it's eight years, you can go to a, be a sustainer, be a member, but not um, have the requirements to uh, work in the thrift shop or do join some of the other committees, although some of them choose to do so. What are the requirements? Generally, we work th two, three hour shifts a month behind the register, and that's an experience in itself. Um, we're encouraged to join one or two committees, uh, whatever we're comfortable with. I've been in charge of the philanthropic, which was fun because I got to spend the money that other people were working for. Um, I was in charge of the thrift shop for two years. But you have a committee under, to help, so people are encouraged to join the committee they're comfortable with. Um, and Operation School Bell runs from August to about December, depending on the need, and sometimes individual schools will call and say, we've got a new child. Um, those are pretty much the requirements. And is it mostly women? Or women? It's, right now, it's all women. Okay. It tends to be all women, but there are some chapters that have men. There's nothing that says you can't have a man join. So, uh, yeah, right. And then historically, it's been women, but that's not the case. I've been to some national conferences where there are some men. Are, are participating. I'm assuming most of your volunteers live in the area? Or? Most, yes, but we have one that, one or two that live in San Francisco, mm -hmm. Daly City, San Bruno. Uh, most of them are in Belmont, um, Burlingame, San Mateo, but we do have a few I'm about guessing, the city. I'm guessing most are probably retired there. Most are, uh, not all. So we can work around as far as working the thrift shop. You know, we're a little, we can be a little loose with that. Uh, so we have a couple of members who still work and they're only available maybe on a Saturday morning or a Friday afternoon. And we have a new online schedule, scheduling system that works really well if you put in the days you're not available. It goes around. Yes, please. I'll send you the link to it that you can log into and um, sign up as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So it's called Good 360 and they get supplies and different things from corporate corporations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so right now you could log in and get 20 uh, girls full zip hoodies for $48. Okay. Normally retail price would be $800. Okay. Yeah, send me the link. That would be great. Uh, so yes. Now having said that, I'm not sure our, our black belt shopper can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, but yeah, it's certainly what we're passing on. Mike has a black belt. Yeah, Charlie too. Okay. Keep on the application. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I noticed here uh, now, like the assault victims and that that thing, and you deal with, you know, like high school children, high school kids, mm -hmm. and those uh, that days. Uh, 
you deal with that through the hospital? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the hospital we, comes to you and say right. we have these San Mateo sets. County will call our chairman and say we need four sets or eight sets. You know, we're out. And she's got access. Um, we do have some storage at Chapter House. And so she, she goes and delivers, ex, you know, whatever the hospital requests. Uh, baskets for Babies, the high school, and Life Moves, and Cora uh, contact us. Um, for the scholarships, we also let the schools the schools decide. Apparently, years ago, before I joined, um, the chapter did their own vetting of the scholarship students, and it was too difficult, and they decided that the school would better be able to do that. So we don't have any direct contact until we go we go to the um, scholarship ceremonies at the end of the school year, and that's the first time we meet our our scholarship students. Now, which hospital is this? San Mateo County General. Oh, San Mateo County. Yeah, all of our uh, <coughs> programs, uh, all the money goes back into San Mateo County. Yeah. Are you a county by county organization? <laughs> yes and no, not really. Okay. Um, there's an organization in the East Bay. Uh, it's, they have their thrift shop in Lafayette. It's not nearly as nice as ours. Um, <laughs> theirs is called uh, Assistance League of uh, Diablo Valley. So it's it varies. It varies from chapter to chapter. There's one in Placer, Placer County that is a bunch of different cities. So is that kind of the model? An Assistance League will have a thrift shop that's associated? Most with of them do. Okay. Not all of them. There are a couple, one in Southern California, and I don't know how they do it, but they have a gala once a year. And they raise all their money for that with that. And they probably have to work all year just as hard as we do to get that off the ground. So how so this is a national organization yes. that then We're, charters chapters. Yes, exactly. What was the genesis of the establishment of Okay, years ago and it's it started in Southern California back I wanna say and I should have looked this up, back in the thirties. Um, there was some kind of a disaster and some women said we need to help those people. I don't know if it was a fire, whatever it was. And it started that way. And it just ballooned. And so the, the um, some of the headquarters are in Burbank. There's quite a few um, chapters in Southern California, but it's all over the country now. Um, from the South and the East Coast. And, and just national, not international. Not international, just national, yeah. You yes. commented that you take knickknacks with no electronics. What do you define as knickknacks? Oh, you know, those little things, you trash kids, the, st the stuff you have. I've got <coughs> Hummels, you know, statuary, um, glass. We take Dish. uh, dishes that I wouldn't call those knickknacks, but we have, get sets of china. It's amazing when someone's cleaning out their house, downsizing, we'll get china. Um, Household goods. Christmas is wonderful. We get some really nice Christmas decorations. We collect them all year round. Lights. Uh, we don't take lights. Nothing that plugs in. Yeah. No. Don't bring us your lights. Yeah. Nothing. You'll never get a combined lights. No. But nothing. <laughs> no. We, we don't take lights. We because of liability things. We don't take anything that plugs in except lamps. We do sell lamps. But when I say knickknacks, um, well, you know, statuary. Uh, holiday dishes, um, we get collectibles. We have a couple people who come in every Tuesday morning because they know we're closed on Mondays. And we restock and put out new stuff and they come looking for collectible things. Bobbleheads, what's a bobbleheads? Bobbleheads, yeah, yeah, we've had bobbleheads, um, commemorative stuff, yeah. Whatever, when people are cleaning out, they decide they no longer want or and I look at my stuff, children who have to clean out their parents' house and just bring everything, which is great for us, but... I just didn't know that. Yeah. So... So then, do you go through things? Yes. And the things you don't want, then where does that... Okay, good question. We do have things that are not sellable. We get clothes everywhere from the really nice, I mean, Fisher stuff, the stuff you think, oh, these people shouldn't have brought this to us. Some of the stuff that's still wearable but not sellable, um, we package up and we, there's a woman who's actually coming to speak at our next meeting who takes them to the homeless. And she says, you know, they don't have to be in perfect condition because they wear them a few times and toss them. So we, anything like that, um, 
one of the women takes things to um, one of the hospitals or a gift shop, and everything is recycled. Anything that isn't even good enough to go to the homeless, we bag up and it's taken, it used to be by St. Vincent de Paul, I don't know if they do it now, for rags. So we throw out very little. Um, if it's something we can't use, but we know one of the other thrift shops might use it, give it to them. So we throw out almost nothing. Yes? So what was the most expensive thing that got donated? How did you guys get rid of it? I, we've had a couple of pieces of jewelry for $500. And they sold. Yes. I heard a story though when we were there that there was a gown that was donated. Oh, I told you that story. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we, when I was running the thrift shop, we got this um, full, full length uh, formal. Oh, I've got one minute. I got It's a good story. Um, <laughs> and I th thought, well, we know what our, our customers will pay. You know, we, we know from history. So I said, oh, do you think we can get $40 for this? And I fiddled around with it, I got the peg out. It was a Ralph Lauren that had been marked down from $7,000 to $4,000. Wow. It had never been worn. So uh, at that time, we had a, a woman who took stuff for consignment, and when she sold it, she'd give us part of the money back. And I have one other quick story to tell. A couple years ago, we got a donation. A gentleman had passed away. The ladies are going through, because we go through everything and check it out. We found $850 in the pocket. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> so they had called, the, her daughter had, his daughter had called the day before to see if we were open. And then we had the, I think we wrote a receipt. So a couple of the women called, anyway, we got the money, gave the money back. We met them and gave them the $850 back. Nice. But it took a little detective work, but we got it done. We actually got written up in the journal for it. Um, did they give any money back? I say here. I think they gave me the donation. I don't remember. I don't remember. But they did call the San Mateo Journal and we got some PR. <laughs>